In this video, we're going to talk about how a gap is formed. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about how a gap is formed, specifically during the day. Because for many people, they're like, hey, how does that happen? I don't get it. You know, we're trading. How do we get a gap? I'm going to run through that. But first of all, let's just to see an example of a normal gap overnight so we can kind of work out on ahead why that occurs. So if you imagine something that closes, so the currency market is closing on Friday evening or the stock market is closing every weekday evening, from then on, you cannot trade. No orders can be placed. No trades can be placed. So you have an example here where here is your close. There is your closing price. And for whatever reason, some bearish news comes out. It doesn't really matter, but the point is something that changes people's perception of the value of that instrument. You may well get the next price a gap lower. And now that occurs purely because there's no ability to trade during that closing period. That's the close. No more orders have gone through. And the next morning, the agreed price from buyers and sellers, because it's pure supply and demand, is whatever that level is, the gap lower. So, you know, let's say we had that at 95 and then we've got a gap lower here to 90. So $5 gap down or whatever the instrument may be. That's the agreed price. So people are agreeing at that point in time that the, that current market is valued at that price. Now, what happens after that is normal trade. You know, open, we get the whole session going, we're going to trade normally. So the gap occurs in that instance purely because there's no time to trade. You can't put an order through. So pretty simple that most people grasp that concept. Um, let's rub this out. OK, but what about intraday? What about when you see kind of charts that are doing this? So you have a candle, or you have another candle here, and then all of a sudden you get a candle down here. You know, why do we get that? Now, this is admittedly, this is quite rare, but it does happen. And why does it happen? OK, so this happens purely because let's have a look at actually this before we talk about how it happens. Let's drill right down into what's happening under the market bonnet, if you like, or in the engine of the market. So we've got our bids here. We've got our ask here or offer, depending on what we're trading or which country we're in. And people are lining up and are literally queuing to buy stock. So bid here, let's assume this is a stock or a futures contract, whatever it may be, doesn't really matter. But whatever they're doing, they're, they're bidding here. So they want to buy 100 here at 96. They want to buy, you know, some other guy wants to buy 50 here at 95. Some guy here wants to buy, you know, 100 here at 92. Um, and then no, someone doesn't want to buy anything now, but he wants to buy 1,000, um, but not until 85, okay? And on this side, you've got kind of 200 at uh, 97, 300 at 98 and so on. You get the idea. So these guys are limit orders that are going directly into the exchange, whether it's a stock exchange, whether that is the futures exchange, NYMEX, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Centralized exchange all have this. Now with currencies, it's a little bit different because we've got several different banks that are trading against each other, but the kind of concept is still relatively the same. So what happens now is if someone comes along and wants to sell a thousand at market, he's going to take a hundred from here, 50 from there, a hundred from there and take some of that and leave whatever the rest is on that bid. OK, now that is why we get a gap, because if the price is quickly moving and there's no price levels in between, we will get a gap in price that moves. Now, admittedly, we're going to see this in a one minute candle as just a shape like this. Right, we're going to see 92 to 85. We're not going to see that actually it's skipped from 92 to 85 because the candle is only showing us the high and low of the day. The, sorry, the high and low of that one minute, the open and close of the one minute. However, let's say, for example, we had the same situation, but someone took 250, which is that lot there, 92. Then we ended the one minute candle and started again. And then the next print, was 85, i.e. someone came along and sold another 100 or 200 at 85. We're going to see this shape. We're going to see the candle here. And the next candle is going to be gapping down here. The open would be at 85. The last candle here would be actually more like this, wouldn't it? 92. We colored red. Next one would be 85. So that's why we get gaps. It's purely because 
you know, in the most liquid instruments, it's rare because this is filled up to the max. You can have 96, 95, 94. You're going to have every single level filled up with multiple players. So you're rarely going to get it. However, when things really start to kick off, volume starts coming in, liquidity dries up. You know, people pull these bids, they're not sure they want to buy it, they back off a little bit, sellers are pounding it, this becomes thin, the more aggressive the sellers are, the thinner this becomes, and then you get this kind of momentum to the downside, and actually you get little mini jumps and little mini gaps in price, which you won't see if they happen within the candlestick, but you will see if they happen from the close of one candlestick to the other. So that's why sometimes you'll see this on price charts when liquidity is low, sometimes overnight as well. So if news comes out overnight on gold uh, and it's still trading the overnight session, you often see this on a, on a, on a low time frame chart, you know, gaps, it'll stagger up moves with your candle and you think, well, how's that happened? That's exactly why it's happened because the way that they, the, the printed, price is printed on a chart is when a trade is executed, that's, that level is then printed, 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 printed. And if we have a big gap in that and a big gap in the time as well, you're going to get a gap in the candlestick. So that's how gaps are formed, guys, intraday. Um, do they happen very often? No, they don't. But it pays to be aware of what is going on under the bonnet, so to speak, as I said before, as to what's happening on the actual exchange and why price is moving and price is changing, giving us these odd shapes sometimes in our charts. Anyway, guys, stay tuned for the next video or subscribe, should I say, and good trading. Keep the risk managed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.